Hi everyone, my name is Josephine and I'm working for Ekpat International in Bangkok. Um, we're just releasing a new research piece, a briefing paper on the sexual exploitation of children in Nepal. Um, so to dig a bit deeper in the issue, I invited our legal research officer, Andrea, uh, to answer some questions for you. So, are you ready? Yes, I am. Let's start. So, can you start uh, with telling us why we chose to uh, look into the situation in Nepal? Okay, so I should say that ECPAT has been working on research on sexual exploitation of children in different countries for over 20 years now. And that's because we truly believe in the importance of high quality evidence to inform advocacy and make sure that things change. Uh, reports and media and information from our local members in Nepal and other organizations working there show, show us uh, that sexual exploitation of children was and still is a reality in the country that needed our and everybody else's uh, attention. So uh, when we worked on Nepal, uh, we realized from sources that we found that uh, Nepali children are impacted by sexual exploitation of, uh, in different uh, forms. Uh, online through trafficking, but also through child early and forced marriages. Uh, this is partially explained by why, uh, weak laws in terms of uh, online child sexual exploitation, uh, but also by a slow economic development uh, and uh, some uh, factors related to the culture and the society that uh, are affecting children. Uh, these elements have also been uh, noted in the scored. Uh, in the scores that Nepal got in the Out of the Shadow Index. Uh, the Out of the Shadow Index is an um, uh, index developed by the Intelligence Unit of The Economist uh, with the aim of assessing countries' responses to child sexual abuse and exploitation. So Nepal ranked 39 out of the 60 countries assessed. Uh, all the countries cover uh, most regions of the world and for South Asia, uh, Nepal ranked ahead of Bangladesh and Pakistan, uh, but uh, behind India and uh, Sri Lanka. And is it possible to say why children are sexually exploited? Uh, I think there are a lot of reasons why children are sexually exploited. Some reasons linked directly to the specificities of Nepal, uh, others more general. Uh, but we did notice that there were two big events in Nepal in the recent years uh, which affected children. One of them is the 10 year long civil war and the other one are the earthquakes that struck Nepal in 2015. Uh, both events um, affected and their consequences are still affecting children in different ways. Uh, in both in terms of forced migration that they caused but also slowed economic and social development and also poverty. Although it's important to say that progress has been shown in terms of reducing uh, poverty of the population in recent years. Okay. Um, and can, could you mention like some of the biggest issues uh, in regards to child sexual exploitation in Nepal today? Yeah. Sure. So we have highlighted in our briefing paper a few main issues. Uh, they are not exhaustive, so there are way more things to discuss, but I can tell you, for instance, that one of the biggest issues we noted was related to child early and forced marriage, which is extremely linked to gender uh, inequality and to social norms <coughs> sorry, in the country, uh, but is also linked to, the, to natural disasters. Uh, after natural disasters, during a natural disaster like the aftermath of the earthquakes in 2015, uh, children's vulnerability to child early and forced marriage has been shown to increase uh, due to the need of the families facing economic difficulties to find ways to cope with uh, economic hardship and also as a way to protect their children, especially girls, from uh, sexual violence during the aftermath of the disaster. And how can uh, a child marriage protect you from sexual exploitation? Uh, parents think, when parents do so, they think that uh, a child then once married would be protected because then uh, being part of the family of the husband and being uh, like having like a, a male figure taking care of them, this would create a deterrent for uh, other men to rape or uh, sexually exploit or abuse the child. Uh, in terms of other issues that we have noted, uh, I'd like to highlight uh, voluntarism. So um, this has been uh, noted in Nepal as uh, 
uh, an issue, a reality happening, uh, and is the commercialization of volunteerism. So tourists, volunteers who come to the country for a short period of time uh, to help in uh, and uh, support uh, childcare homes or other places with direct contact with children. Although most of these uh, volunteers are of course well-meaning, uh, their presence in the, um, in the child care room may increase the vulnerability of children to different kind of risks, including the sexual exploitation. How so? Uh, first, uh, this, is, this is also linked to the lack of monitoring of, monitoring of these uh, volunteers and to the lack of regulation to check first, so prior to their arrival in the country, their criminal um, records, so if they've been convicted any other crimes and sexual offenses uh, previously, uh, but also because um, there there is a lack of code of conduct uh, in the childcare homes and uh, in these other places where the volunteers on what should be uh, their approach to children uh, and what are things to keep in mind from an ethical and protective point of view. The last issue we can talk about is the lack of attention on online child sexual exploitation, mm -hmm. both from a social point of view but also from a legal point of view. Uh, so Nepal has been increasing uh, in terms of uh, internet penetration and mobile phone subscriptions, uh, but uh, that has not been uh, the case for uh, the legislation on online child sexual exploitation, for instance. Uh, so, um, although child sexual abuse material are somehow criminalized, although not perfectly, uh, other forms of online child sexual exploitation like live streaming of child sexual abuse or online grooming uh, have not been criminalized yet in uh, legislation and internet service providers are not mandated by law to report child sexual abuse material uh, circulating or hosted on their platforms. But it is safe to say uh, that children in Nepal are affected by uh, online child sexual exploitation. Yes, children right? are. And uh, in the research that we have uh, looked at to prepare our briefing, uh, we saw that uh, many children are not aware of the risks online and do not know how to protect themselves. And also that some of them have experienced severe forms of abuse uh, in the online uh, environment. And uh, is the government doing anything to stop this and to protect children? So the government and Nepal, of Nepal has taken uh, positive steps uh, uh, for tackling um, this crime. Uh, for instance, they have developed new laws uh, in, on uh, domestic violence, on human trafficking, and also on, on sexual exploitation and child exploitation. An example is the Child Act from 2018 which prohibits uh, the exploitation in prostitution and other sex work, uh, but also some forms, although not all, as I said before, of online child sexual exploitation. The government is also currently working on a national action plan on child, uh, child sexual exploitation and abuse with a focus on online safety. So this is a very welcome step and we hope it will be finalized soon and implemented. Yeah. Um, so, but is there anything else that you think that it's like it, that it's urgent for them to also uh, do apart from the things that they already started? So I think there are many things that are urgent, but there are also many things that are very practical and uh, uh, relatively easy to do. Uh, for instance, in terms of legislation, legislation is not uh, consistent. It's not. Um, um, and it's not, it's not been amended on the basis of uh, international standards. So that could be a first starting point, taking the, the example of international standards and just making sure it's included in uh, local legislation, especially when it comes, as I said before, uh, to online child sexual exploitation, but also trafficking of children for sexual purposes. Uh, Nepal uh, should also consider developing uh, guidelines on how to involve uh, volunteers uh, in uh, child care homes and orphanages and monitor their work in the country, their presence in the country uh, and make sure to uh, conduct policy, international policy back, uh, background checks and uh, clearances uh, and also to have code of conduct uh, in the child care homes uh, and do not allow uh, volunteers to work in residence homes for children. Uh, other things that can be done is to also work to raise awareness with families and communities on the harmful effects of child sexual exploitation and child and early forced marriage. But this should be done at the same time with finding ways to make sure that they have alternatives 
uh, to reduce the economic burden that they're facing due to poverty and due to the aftermath of the earthquakes. Uh, so it was team effort, so we spend a lot of time working on this report and we uh, learn a lot about Nepal and about the situation of the children there. It was a bit challenging in terms of like uh, sources available on the country and research, primary research already done. Uh, so we really hope that this is a first step for others and for the government to better collect data and information on the children to make sure that this informs uh, the development of their policies and uh, legislation in the future. And the briefing paper will be available online, so you can just go to egpat.org slash Nepal to read it. Um, and we will now present this to the government and then we'll follow up and make sure that you stay updated as well. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.